Infill is one of the key features of 3D print. It affects the strength, the weight, and print time, print cost, a lot of things. And the infill density and pattern can be the difference between a three hour print and a six hour print, as well as if it will break on application or if it will succeed. The best infill pattern is the one that provides the strength you need with the least amount of materials and print time, or in other terms, the best strength to weight ratio. There's a lot of variations on the infill, but they don't all do the same thing. Some infill patterns are better in strength in one direction than the other. Some are uniform in each direction. Others don't provide too much internal support. Some allow it to be filled up with a liquid. Some can be drained, some cannot. But what we're gonna talk about today is what is the optimal infill pattern? Is it one of the types of infills that already exist in most slicers, or is there some other avenues that are soon gonna be in the 3D printing realm that provide even higher strength to weight ratios? This brings us to volumetric lattices. I currently use a plugin for Fusion 360, which gives you a great deal of control over how you want that internal lattice. It is similar to an infill in the sense that it is the internal structure of a 3D print or a 3D model, but where it varies is instead of having a 3D uh, kind of a surface on the inside where with a infill, you kind of just have the width of the extrusion line. Density is increased by making more of a pattern or making more lines of the pattern. Whereas for a volumetric lattice, there are two ways in which the density can be increased. Either increasing the amount of cells that are in there for the sine wave, if it goes up and down, it'll be the distance between both the peaks, or you can make the cells thicker. To set this up, I'm gonna start with a cylinder of, we're gonna do 100 millimeters and extrude it 100 millimeters up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this. Currently have a trial for it. And you can do a 15 day trial through Fusion 360. And I'm going to select the gyroid. Or select the body and select gyroid. There's a few different options for the pattern. These ones aren't as good as some of the infills, but gyroid is similar to infills. Uh, you can also do custom, which has a lot of options. And you'll see that this is a pattern on all of these sides, but what we want is to only do the inside, not quite the outside, so we're gonna wanna offset it a little bit. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna leave the very top and the very bottom exposed so you can see inside of it. So I'm gonna to go to offset first and add geometry. And we're gonna select this outer one. And you can see it's now just on the outside. And for the offset, we're gonna make this <clears throat> about the wall thickness. So we're gonna do two. So it's two millimeters, it's still a little bit thick of walls, but it should work well for our purposes. And then you'll see there's gonna be a blend distance and then solidity. So the solidity is gonna be just the outside, whereas the blend distance is gonna be when it's gonna go from this solidity number, so 100%, to whatever uh, solidity you have in here. And if we go back to the setup, we'll see cell size, run through these kind of in order, uniform, you have non-uniform, this lets you stretch the cells in different sides. So we can have one say 20, one 10. And I'll just put this one as 10 as well. So you can see it kind of gets that stretched look to it. Uh, to make it a little bit clearer, so this is kind of how dense it is, I'm gonna change that down to 20 just so we can get a better view of the cells. And if you go back to setup, you'll see it is longer on one side than the other. 
So this can be great for increasing strength in one direction, kind of down this axis, while leaving it a little bit more capable of kind of comp crunching and compressing in this other axis. Uh, this will probably have some very niche use case scenarios, but having that ability to be able to manipulate that is quite useful in my opinion. But for this one, I'm going to leave it as uniform. Because the main feature I want to mess with, I'll pick something that's pretty normal. 15 looks doesn't look too bad. I mean, maybe even change it down to 10. Yeah, I'll leave it as 10. As this. So you can make it more dense or less dense. So the cell size stays the same when I do this, but the thickness of it increases or decreases. So I'm going to start off with 20, see kind of what that looks like. And we're going to change the blend distance. So right now it has a very short blend distance from the very edge to the inside. What I want to do is have it be very gradual towards the center. So I'm going to start by changing this to something high, like 20. So now you see it has a pretty wide blend distance. You might even be able to change that to, I think 50 would be all the way to the very center. So it's going to be blending all the way down to 10. If we kind of mess with this just a little bit, so you'll see it gets completely hollow at the very center. Not quite what I want. What if change cell size a little bit? So a little bit closer. Bring that up to 15. I don't quite want it to go all the way to the very center. So let's go 30. A little bit more so that we can see inside. You'll notice that it still is not 100% dense right in here. It's only going to be 100% dense on the very outside, but it does block off a lot of what is visible. And if you want to have this closed off so it looks like a actual print, because it typically won't have an open face, is you'd have the offset faces include this top geometry and the bottom. So I'm going to press OK. And now because this is a volumetric lattice, what we need to do is uh, convert this into a mesh. So I'm going to click this tool. I just leave it as default settings and press OK. Now my computer is going to hate me just a little bit for the next minute, but what it's going to do is convert this into a lot of, or into a mesh, uh, which will allow you to 3D print it. It becomes a little bit more difficult to mess with as a CAD model. That took a few minutes for my computer, but here we go. We have the final model. You can kind of see the internal structure through here. And it looks pretty interesting in my opinion. You kind of get this slightly larger cell size towards the center, where they get a little bit smaller towards the outside. But the important part is what would this compare to with a typical infill pattern? So what we're going to do is place this in a slicer and figure out the weight for it. And then we're going to do a cylinder of the same exact size and see and make the infill percentage equal to whatever the weight would be. Hold the weight constant. And then run a few tests. Okay, so I did change the size to 50 millimeters in diameter to 100 millimeters in length, just because it was a little larger than I expected. So this is what that one looks like. Similar, but we'll save quite a bit of material. Okay, so we now have two cylinders of equal weight, one with infill, one volumetric lattice with an infill. So the difference between the two is the volumetric lattice with the infill has an infill of 5%, and that, excuse me, the volumetric lattice with the infill has an infill of 10% with the gyroid, whereas the 
only infill has an infill of 30%. The first thing you'll notice is how uniform the infill is, where on the lattice with the infill, it is less uniform. All more material is located around the outside. But if you're trying to get the very most out of the strength to weight ratio, this might be an option. So I'd like to get these printed off and test them. One more thing. I'm gonna remove the top surface in the slicer so that you can see the internals of both of them. So I just took this off the printer and you can tell on the left hand side, you have a very uniform infill where the density is the same in the center as it is on the outside. Whereas on the right hand side, you'll see much more of the mass located around the outer edge. I think this would lead to a stronger print. However, it's gonna require some testing. So if this is something you'd like to see rigorously tested, please like and subscribe or, and leave a comment and I'll come out with that video soon. Thank you for watching.